Today, we're gonna be either showing why well, I'm gonna be coming back to this spot again, or why we're never coming back ever again. So in the past, we've done a lot of catch and cook videos, but never before have I been so excited for one like I am right now. So for today, let me just kind of give you guys the game plan. We have one crab net, two rods. Now we have one rod that we're going to put a sabiki rig on, and the other rod we're gonna have with the halibut rig, and we're gonna put a little piece of either herring or jack smelt, send it right to the bottom, and hopefully get a nice rockfish, maybe even lingcod. Obviously with the crab net, we're gonna be sending it down for red rock crab is our number one priority, and uh, we're gonna take whatever we catch, bring it home and cook it up. Okay, so the first rod that we're gonna be getting out this morning, or this afternoon, I should say, is a sabiki rod. This is to try and catch us some, uh, some more crab bait. And at the very, very, very top, we have a little bobber. It's gonna keep it on the surface, mostly for jack smelt. Uh, we're gonna see if we get a bite. So let's cast this thing out there. Ultralight rod, it's called, the, I think it's the, the Cadence CC5. We've made a review video about it. So uh, cast it out. Let's get our bell on here. Make sure that drag's good. We're fishing. All right, now that we've gotten the fishing rods all set up, it's time to get the crab net in the water because that's our number one priority for today. Um, because our main priority is crab, that means we're gonna be able to try and get our underwater footage set up for you guys. Hopefully we'll get it set up. Fingers crossed, no promises. But uh, let's get the crab, water, crab pot on the water and let me show you how we get it all set up so that you guys can do the same thing at your water. Like with any good fishing trip, you need the right kind of bait. And for today, because we're going for crabs and they ate pretty much anything, we're just gonna be using some scrap leftover bait, which in this case is a bunch of cast netted jack smelt that we caught a couple days ago. In my opinion, I really love jack smelt for uh, crabs because they're not amazing for other baits when they're dead or for other fish when they're dead, but for crabs, they are really good. So we're gonna put these in our little crab net and I'm gonna show you how we drop it. Okay, so this is our crab net on the right. We bought it at West Marines for about 60 bucks. If you guys are interested in picking up a crab net, we'll leave an Amazon link in the description below to uh, find one yourself. But we're gonna be taking this jack smelt and putting it in this tiny rubber container. But uh, this plastic piece we bought actually separately from uh, separately from the net, but we'll also put a link in the description for one of these if you're interested in picking up. Sorry if you hear that, the audio is kind of bad because we had some jets flying over. But all we're gonna do is simply take all this jack smelt and just stick it right in. That's all it is. Really simple. Get your hands a little dirty. And we're gonna take this top, we're gonna screw it on. And what this cage does is it provides still the ability for a crab to come in and be interested in the bait and get that scent, but it keeps the crabs from always taking the bait and running away. So we use it and it's a game changer and it's a must have if you're gonna be doing any crabbing here in the San Francisco Bay. Time to get this crab net in the water and all we're simply gonna do is have Zach hold on to the extra rope. Get this up and over and slowly bring it down. And we're doing it slowly because we have a GoPro on that's kind of precarious. You guys can do this as fast or as slow as you want to. Let go of the line, Zach, for me. Uh, snag. But uh, yeah, and the goal is just to get this crab net all the way to the very bottom of the ocean floor because that's where all the crab are. So slowly going to drop it all the way to the bottom. And once that I feel that I've hit bottom, I let go of the rope and we're fishing.
All right, guys, we are about to bring in the crab net for the first time today. One thing that I would like to remind you guys is, number one, we're only going for red rock crab. So any other crab, except for spider crab, we'll keep spider crab, but any other crab we're throwing back. And the reason that we're not gonna be keeping any Dungeness crab if we do catch one is because you're not allowed to legally keep Dungeness crab here in the bay. If you are going for rock crab, it needs to be at least four inches of the shell. So one side to the other. So we'll show you how to measure that up too. Um, then, then the other most important thing that I cannot believe I forgot to tell you guys is when you, after you throw your crab in the water, you wanna set a timer for about 10 minutes. Uh, sometimes the timer, the time length between how long you want the crab, the, how long you want the net in the water will change. Uh, we'd like to do 10 minutes as our first net, and then depending on how much crabs you get, we'll either shorten or lengthen that amount of time. So if we get a small amount of crabs, we'll lengthen time. But if we get a lot of crabs, we'll shorten the time. You guys understand the point. So with that being said, let's pull up the crab net. Gave Zach the rod, cameraman Zach the rod. He's being the cameraman today, which is why he's not doing much fishing. Why doesn't it? It's not recorded. Our audio is mic'd up. But uh, he's getting bites on the Sabiki rig. Oh, got one. Got one on, baby. Let's go. Oh, that's a perfect live shiner smelt. Or live surf perch. Live shiner. Here. Let's see here. Barely hooked. No this is a live shiner smelt. Or live shiner perch, sorry. We're going to put this in the bucket and use him as crab bait. All right, next time, or a time for our next pool. Hasn't been that long since our last pool, but we thought maybe we'll try a shorter pool this time. That makes a difference. Oh yeah, that's what we needed to do. Shorter pool. Oh my God. I knew it. Shorter pool. And you got the bait back. And I got the bait back. That is what we are looking for. That's five keepers. That's a couple keepers right here. All right, you guys, so unfortunately, we had those crabs, and when we were going to go clean them, we knocked the bucket into the water. All the crabs got away. We got the bucket back though. So, uh, to continue this catch clean, uh, sorry, there's no clean, catch and cook, we're gonna go to Safeway, we're gonna go pick up all the other ingredients that we need and buy some crab meat. I know it's not the real exact crab that we caught, but it'll be at least something for you guys. Sorry we screwed this up for you guys big mistake by us but uh hopefully we'll at least be able to imitate what it would be like with our crap we could just kind of pretend like it was our crap just got back to the house now and we're gonna be cooking up this crab that we 100% caught um, <laughs> but yeah so our ingredients are obviously the crab a little bit of butter parsley bread salt and pepper tomato lemon and a bit of garlic cloves so let's get cooked all right so along with the crab I'm also gonna be making these onion rings that I got from Safeway uh, I don't know whenever I have a sandwich I like to have onion rings with, uh, with the sandwich so I thought that I'd make these with them just, they're frozen, just can pop them in the oven. Pretty simple, but I thought I might uh, include that um, until you guys end up doing it. So yeah. First, we're gonna take some of this crab meat, which we totally caught ourselves. Now, I'm gonna take one tablespoon of uh, mayonnaise. Uh, add that to the little, little mixture we got. All right, after putting that mayonnaise in, you just stir it up. It should look somewhat like that. Put that over to the side, and we're gonna start making uh, the actual, the toast. It's the butter garlic toast that we're gonna put on the sandwich. So first, we're gonna take 
two tablespoons of this butter. Now I'm gonna take, we'll do two cloves of butter, or frozen butter. So we'll do three. And then we'll put in two tablespoons of butter. And then we're gonna melt that. So the camera died, but chopped up with the tomatoes. And this is what your butter garlic mixture should look like. Done that, it's time to butter glaze, butter, butter garlic glaze our bread. So I'm just taking this little tool right here. You can use a knife, whatever you have will work. We're gonna take these, bring them over to a little pan over here. And they're both not gonna fit. Yeah, they will. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so the final step is putting the crab meat onto the sandwich. So we're gonna just take the crab meat, kind of load it on there. That's just about fine enough. All right, now we're gonna take the tomatoes. Just gonna put one slice on each. I'm gonna put some parsley on because it makes it look cool. And yeah, that's the uh, final finished product. really good. It tastes buttery, tastes crabby. There's a lot of garlic in here, I can tell. Um, mind you, I wasn't here when he was cooking it, so I don't really know exactly what came in here, but it tastes really buttery, it tastes really garlicky. Uh, the crab is a little bit, like, not too noticeable, but the tomato is a really nice touch, and the whatever green is in here is a really nice touch as well, so, yeah. All right, this is my taste test. I think it's really good. Yeah, I think it, it goes really well together and it's definitely something we're gonna make again. Like I said in the beginning of the video, it's something I was very excited to make and uh, I had high hopes, success. By far, my favorite catch and cook we've done so far. I like the best tasting catch and cook we've done so far. I'm gonna finish this sandwich. Really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It was a really, really fun video to film and I just wanna let you guys know that the next four videos are all gonna be pre-recorded because me, Zach, Jack will all be in New York and Erie, Pennsylvania, filming some freshwater videos. So I just wanna let you know, the next four videos will be pre-recorded, so they're not gonna be perfectly like in time like they usually do. But uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button. That way you'll never miss whenever we upload and you help support us, so it's a win-win. But uh, yeah, see you next week.